Jai Prabhupada Ki Jai. So now we are ready for the continuation of the... So now we are going to continue discussing the qualities of a devotee. This morning we discussed some of the qualities. I hope you all haven't overeaten so you don't fall asleep. Sure, no one's going to fall asleep. So does anyone remember the last quality that we discussed? I want to see how good the Russian IQ is. What was the last quality we discussed? Okay, okay, no problem. The last quality we discussed was a devotee is not interested in material acquisition. He's not interested in material uh, pos possessions. Yes. So how many qualities are there for a devotee to develop? The next quality that Lord Chaitanya mentioned is fixed in devotional service. So a devotee should be fixed in devotional service. Fixed in devotional service means the devotee should be determined that I will stay on the path of devotional service. It does not matter what difficulty comes. It is not that in the material world there will be no problems. It is not that in the material world one will not have to face many difficulties. The devotee must be fixed in his conviction that except for devotional service I have no alternative. The devotee should not be thinking, okay, I'll do a devotional service for two, three years, but then I will leave and go into Maya. He should not think that devotional service is a part-time activity. One may be a householder engaged in professional duties, but the principle of devotional service should not be ignored. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that one should be fixed on the devotional path. But how to be fixed on a devotional path? That is the million ruble question. We want to remain fixed, but still Maya pushes us. In the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna asked Krishna a very simple question. He said, even knowingly, one is forced into sinful activities. Why? A person knows that what I'm doing is wrong. Still he does it. Why? Krishna replied, it is lust only which is the all devouring enemy of the living entity, which is always burning like fire and which is never satisfied. Just like when fire is burning, if you go on adding fuel to the fire, the fire will never stop. So this, the nature of this lust is that the, the more that you may engage in unlimited activities of sense enjoyment, but still you're not satisfied. Even in old age, the desire is there. It is not that in old age, the desire goes away. But the only problem is that the parts of the body do not cooperate. In old age also, you meet people who talk, the old men who talk about the youthful days. That means the desire is there. So the question is how to remain fixed on the devotional path. If we follow the instructions of the Guru, Sadhu and, Kri and Shastra, then there will be no problem. But if we do not follow these instructions, then there will be problem. So if we chant our rounds, have Mangalarti class and so on, take Prashad, devotee association, then spiritual advancement will be very easy. Otherwise, spiritual advancement will be very difficult. So one has to be very steady and determined. The next point is, one must control the six bad qualities. The bad qualities are lust, anger, greed, and so on. Lust, anger, greed, hatred, envy. We are, we have unlimited lusty desires. Have you heard of Rajneesh? You know, Rajneesh is well known because everybody likes his philosophy. His philosophy is satisfy your lust to the maximum. And one day you will get tired. Then you can come to spiritual life. I call this the philosophy of the pigs and the hogs because the hogs believe in the policy of unlimited sense enjoyment. Lust cannot be satisfied by giving lust. Just like when you have a scratch, an itching sensation, when you have a skin disease. When you have a skin disease, you feel like scratching. And when you scratch, you get for some time instant pleasure. But you may get instant relief, but then the disease becomes much more worse. Therefore, therefore, if you have skin disease, the doctor will say, don't touch your skin. In Russia also, the doctors say the same thing. It's the same universal principle. So this is exactly what happens when you engage in sense enjoyment to satisfy your lusty desire. You may get some instant pleasure, but then it is going to be painful. Do you get chewing gum in this country, in Russia? I don't know if you eat chewing gum now, but I'm sure you all must have eaten it in the past. So you no. eat chewing gum? 
So, uh, so a chewing gum when you eat, in the beginning it is sweet, but then it, then it becomes bitter. So a sense gratification is exactly like a chewing gum. In the beginning you'll find it sweet, but in the end it will be very bitter. All those who are eating flesh, for example, today to satisfy their tongue, they will without fail have to pay the price by taking their birth as those very animals that they are eating today. There is material principle, tit for tat. So, in the material world, it is ocus for ocus. <laughs> and when it comes to sin, we think it, this, will, this law will not work. This law will not work. And all those who are engaging in illicit sex, they will, in the next, they will have to pay the price by going to the hellish planets, where the male and female have to embrace a burning rod-like form of the opposite sex. I mean, people, young couples may take pleasure in embracing each other, but nobody will like embracing a burning rod-like form. So sense gratification has a very high price. Don't think that the sense gratification that you're getting is free. Nothing is free. You have to pay for it very dearly. You will have to pay for it by taking birth in many lower species of life. You'll have to pay in so, take birth in so many lower species of life that for you to again get a human birth, it will take thousands and thousands of years. Just like sometimes you get caught in a traffic jam, how angry you become. Sometimes you have to stand in a long line to get fruits. So imagine if you're standing in a long line for four or five hours, and when your turn comes, the man says, sorry, all finish, orange is finished. <laughs> so, you have stood in, so you have stood in such a long line to get this human birth. And you had to stand in this long line so that you could perfect your life and go back to Godhead. Now when your turn has come, it was going to be, sorry, go back to animal life. Then we also have to give up anger. In the material world, we become, we become angry when we cannot get our sense enjoyment. The devotee becomes angry only when he cannot engage in service. A devotee does not buy, become angry if he does not get his quota of sense enjoyment. Lord Chaitanya was very angry when he saw that Nityananda was attacked by Jagai and Madai. You know that story of Jagai and Madai? Everybody knows? Yeah. Okay. So Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya was very angry. Hanuman and Ram, Lord Ram was very angry when he found out that Sita was kidnapped by Ravan. So we should only become angry when we cannot serve the Lord. When your senses are saying, please take me for some sense enjoyment to the disc, to the nightclub. Then he should get angry at the senses and beat it up. Then greed. Greed is another uh, weakness that we have. The nature of greed is it can never be satisfied. Now the Muni gives a nice example. He says that if a man is hungry, he can be satisfied if you give him food. If a man is thirsty, he can be satisfied when you give him water. And he says when a man is angry, he can be satisfied when he shouts at you. Sometimes the mother or father are angry with the child, but after they shout, it is all forgotten. But Narada Muni says a greedy man can never be satisfied. <laughs> Greed knows no limit. People will go to any extent, sell, do, cheat. So, greed is very bad. Then envy. In the material world, everyone is envious of the other person. One individual is envious of another. One nation is envious of another nation. One community is envious of another community. But the devotee is not envious. If he sees that somebody else is doing more service, he does not mind it. He is happy. He says, if he can do so much service, then I should also do more. This is known as spiritual envy. Just like amongst the gopis, when they see each other serving, each tries to do better than the other. In the material world, when somebody is doing something better than you, you try to pull him down. Then uh, another thing, uh, envy, and then hatred. Hatred also should be given. A devotee hates no one because he loves everyone. Another quality is, a devotee should not overeat. All diseases come from the tongue. If you don't overeat, then you will never fall sick. The Vedic system is that there must be little hunger in the stomach. I don't know about the Russians, but at least the Americans and all, they tend to overeat like anything. So a devotee Prashad. only eats Krishna Prashad, only what is offered to Krishna. If something is not offered to Krishna, sorry, we won't take it. And we, only, we don't eat meat, fish and eggs. People say, why don't you eat meat, fish and eggs? We don't eat meat, fish and eggs, but Krishna says don't eat. Animals are also the children of God. And animals are the less intelligent children of God. Just like in your family, you may have some brother or sister who is less intelligent than you are. 
That doesn't mean that you can tell your father, okay, let me kill him. Go these days, so much killing is going on. That is very tragic. So, uh, we should not, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati has said that the tongue, the belly and the genitals are all in a straight line. So if the tongue is in control, then the belly and the genitals will automatically come in control. We should only eat food that is offered to Krishna or Guru and we should avoid overeating. Eating food cooked by non-devotees is unhealthy for spiritual and If you eat grains that are cooked by karmis, then the mentality of the person who is cooking will enter into your body and then one will be forced into sinful activities. Grains have one unique feature that they transmit to you the mentality of the person who has cooked them. So therefore we should only eat grains that are offered to Krishna. Another point is they are respectful. This is another quality of a devotee. He is very respectful. So a devotee is very respectful to everyone. So respectful even to an ant he doesn't want to harm. You know that story of Narada Muni and the hunter? Everybody knows, only one person knows. So once there was a hunter who was making great, who used to get great fun in half killing animals. This man used to half kill the animals and and after they would die, he would sell the flesh for his livelihood. So once this hunter, Narada Muni saw this hunter and he told him, do you know what you're doing? It is such a great sin. So then this hunter gave up his killing profession and he became a saintly person. But after becoming a saintly person, he was so careful when he would walk that he would not even step over an ant. So this is the this is the mentality of a devotee. He does not even want to step over an, an ant. Another quality is that he is so a devotee is respectful to all living entities. As Vaishnavas, we offer our respects every morning. We say Vancha Kalpa Tavibhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaya Vacha. We offer our respects to all the assembled Vaishnavas. The next quality is uh, a devotee is grave. Uh, but this doesn't mean that the devotee never laughs. Like many times in the lecture, you all have laughed today. What grave means is that the devotee does not joke, is not frivolous. He doesn't joke unnecessarily. Like sometimes, you know, in material life, people call them other people by funny names and they're always <laughs> making useless jokes. So... Um, we don't joke for the sake of joking. We don't make fun of other people. And we are serious about our real occupation. Therefore, we see, we saw that Prabhupada was always grave, but he would also laugh, but not you, uh, not without reason. Another uh, quality is compassionate. Now, compassionate is very similar to a quality that we have already discussed in the morning session, which is, okay, so compassion is very similar to mercifulness. Compassion means to understand that when the living entity is suffering, he is suffering because of his desire for sense enjoyment. The living entity is suffering because of his desire for sense enjoyment. Hence, the devotee is anxious to give everyone Krishna consciousness. When we go out preaching, when we go on Harinam and book distribution, we are displaying our compassion. And when it is time for book distribution and we fall sick or give some excuse, that means we are not displaying compassion. So, uh... Compassion must be there in every Vaishnava. And without false prestige, because of false prestige, we are identifying with the body. Because of false prestige, we are thinking that I am this body. Because of false prestige, we don't want spiritual advice. When we are told that there is nothing but misery in life because of false prestige, we say, no, where is the misery? I am happy. And even in devotional life, because of false prestige, we don't think that we need to be corrected. Therefore, when some devotee gives you some advice into false pressure, we say, Oh, I'm okay. When somebody gives you advice for your well, for your spiritual advancement, you should thank that person. When somebody is just flattering you, then you should be scared. You should be scared of flatterers. In the material world, everybody wants to flatter the other person. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, the spiritual master Prabhupada used to say, Be scared of those who are flattering you. But we have to be honest in dealing with each other. The business of the spiritual master is to always speak the truth and to point out the faults in the disciple. So we should be happy to get ourselves corrected. Another quality is a devotee is friendly. So a devotee is friendly with everyone. Being friendly means just like when you go on Harinam or you go on preaching when somebody comes. Just like when you go to a store to buy something. And uh, 
uh, if in that store the salesman is very friendly, then you feel like buying something from there. Am I right? <laughs> so a devotee should be friendly with everyone. Another quality of a devotee is he's poetic. Another quality is that he is very expert. So he is very expert in the science of devotional service. You have to be a real expert in this profession. And a devotee is silent. Silent doesn't mean that he does not open his mouth. Silence means that he does not open his mouth unnecessarily. He will not joke uselessly. Just like this morning, I gave the example of Jad Bharata. So Jad Bharata, he was very silent before. But then, when it came time to speak the philosophy to King Rahugana, he spoke out very boldly. So similarly, a devotee should be very... A devotee should be silent, but when it comes to preaching the philosophy to remove the illusion, then we should speak up boldly. So these are briefly that I have described the qualities. Uh, a devotee should decorate himself with these spiritual qualities. Just like a materialist decorates himself with nice ornaments, a devotee should decorate himself with nice spiritual qualities. And if we decorate ourselves with these spiritual qualities, then there will be spiritual success. So with these qualities... We have a better understanding of how our spiritual character should develop. By always meditating on these qualities, the devotee will be able to achieve the ultimate goal of life, which is to develop love of God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, believe it or not, we have finished a discussion on the 26 qualities of a devotee. Of course, as I told you early in the morning, I'm discussing these qualities only in brief. So now, should we take on questions? Why does it happen so that we can uh, immediately become pure devotees? Why does it take time? Why does it take time? When you are suffering from a disease for 20, 30 years, can you go to the doctor and expect in one day you'll get cured? Uh, I heard that Lord Chaitanya made everybody pure devotees straight away. Well, we are not Lord Chaitanya. And nor are you... Uh, those who lived when Lord Chaitanya was on the planet. Uh, which means that uh, it will take a long time. On, on Just the... as one lifetime, that's all. You know, you have been sinning for millions of years. Now, what is one lifetime? And this one, li in, uh, by devotional service, you're also going to get real happiness. So, where's the problem? How can we recognize uh, the... Uh, whether our, associ uh, our association in Grihastha, Brahmacharya and Mataji's, uh, um, see, not ashram, but in the connection, it, are there any Krishna consciousness? Our, not association, but our uh, relationship. relationship with each other in those three groups of people. How can we recognize them? Being you should Krishna? make sure that it is according to the Shastras and with the help of Guru and Sadhu, make sure that you make sure that you're doing no wrong. If you are doing anything wrong, then it should be corrected at once. You have to be more specific if you want more details. Uh, I've uh, you've read that um, by bathing in uh, Radha Kun, you get a uh, straight love to Krishna. Does it happen straight away? Uh, it's not so easy. You have to pay the price. Anything that comes cheap, you don't value it much. If you get something with difficulty, then you enjoy it more. When you have to jump to get something from the top of the shelf, you feel a feeling of accomplishment when you get it. But when something can be obtained easily, then you don't care for it. Isn't it? When you get something easily, then you don't value it much. Uh, if uh, there's a question about uh, home, you know, animals which you keep at home, and can, is it, uh, you can't chase it, but what, what to do with it? Your problem is you have animals at home which you kept before you came to spiritual life. Now that you've come to spiritual life, you realize you should give your love to God instead of animals. So the best is you look for a friend who will take care of these animals <laughs> nicely. I'm sure you'll find some friend who will agree to take care of them. Now, you want to know why people keep animals? Of course, one reason they keep animals is because the love is normal. So they want to love someone, so they try to give their love to animals. Another reason is, actually, everybody wants to control somebody else. But today, everybody is realizing that there's no one left to control because everybody is so independent. The parents control the children while the children are young. But the same children, when they grow up, they say, bye, bye, daddy. Of course, the devotee children are different. Huh? So now that the karmis have seen 
There is no one they can control. They can't even control their children more than 10, 12 years. At least one category of entities will not rebel against them. And those are the animals. They have full confidence that the dog and the cat will not rebel against their authority. So in order to satisfy their desire to control, they control dogs and cats. I think in your country, the disease is not as bad as it is in America and other Western countries. In the Western countries, the disease is so bad that they keep dogs, cats, they eat with them, they, do, they give them full facility. They don't hesitate in killing the cow. Even the cow will give you milk and it will take nothing in itself. Just see God's arrangement. Cow will only eat grass and from the other side and it will give milk in exchange. So the same people who will kill cows, if you tell them, can I kill your cat? They say, no. They won't let the cat or dog be killed, but they'll kill the cows, no problem. Uh, did the uh, devotees in Europe made any uh, demonstrations, demonstrations against, against the killing, cow killing, cows killing? I don't know, maybe. The, anyway, even if they did, you think it's going to make much of a difference? Mm. Sorry. 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 Uh, uh, he came to, to some places and said uh, those things were uh, bought or taken before uh, being, uh, you being in, uh, in movement, in the transition movement. Mm -hmm. And so you must not use them. All the things were destroyed. All the, even, you know, the flat was ruined. And <laughs> this devotee, uh, then he understood that maybe it was not nice. And, you know, but the flat is ruined till now. And the relatives of that devotee is just uh, giving them, giving that devotee uh, very bad, uh, you know. Uh, okay, I follow. Words. And what to do? What to do to this devotee? And uh, obvi obviously, the devotee who did like this was an immature devotee. Yeah. Yeah. What to do? What to do for him? And he is uh, thinking about it. And then those relatives are thinking about him badly till now. And but I told the devotee, but that it was done beforehand. Don't think about it. But how to stop those relatives to to, to think bad things? About him? <laughs> I'm not an expert in this. <laughs> just, just tell the relatives honestly that we've made a mistake. Honesty is the best principle and expect correction. If a devotee goes to some, to, uh, has to accept some situation, some condition, but he is not sure about, uh, will it, uh, maybe it might take him, it might, might lead to his fall down or it might not. But should he take the risk of going into it? Well, if you're going to fall down, then of course you should not take the risk. Just like you're not going to stand on the edge of this window to try something because there's is even one percent chance you may fall down. <laughs> Chanakya Pandit said when you're in doubt whether you should do something or not, best is don't do it. When you associate with demons, you don't always tell the truth. Because sometimes it can be harmful if you tell the demon the truth and they can harm some. So it's preaching has... the 26 qualities of the devil. Would it go yeah, against yeah. it? No, so you have to preach in a very practical way. The truth has to be spoken, but in a palatable way. Just like, uh, not diplomatic, but palat uh, practical. Just like the Bhagavatam says, those who are materialists are like dogs and cats and camels. Those are there like dogs and camels and asses and hogs. So you don't go and say, Honorable dogs, hogs, camels, and asses, please listen to me. So you speak the truth, but you tell it in a nice way. Who can uh, be in such a position to preach to demons? Who can be in a position to preach to demons? All of us. We are preaching to demons all the time. Someone who's killing the child in the womb, someone who's killing cows, someone who's doing all this crime, you mean they're not demonic mentality, and what are they? I read that this, those can, can be only pure devotees that we should uh, avoid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> huh? We should avoid? Well, everybody has to preach. What do you think when you go on the Harinam? You only meet the pure devotees that you preach to? Do, uh, we are preaching to people with demonic mentality wherever we go. More questions? I think you all are running out of gas. What's that? I don't understand. No, it's understandable. Um, would we always feel like um, uh, we're at fault between uh, b before uh, uh, Krishna? Yes, you should always think you're guilty, then you will try guilty. to improve. 
You know, in India, in India, when I give lecture series, uh, we have a special system that after the quick, after the uh, lecture, we appoint a jury of two or three people and we give awards after, at, at the end to the best question. Um, if the love of Krishna is replaced by love to spiritual master, uh, does it mean that we're advancing? Or in, the, in that form where... The spiritual up. master is always telling the disciple to love Krishna. Of course, Krishna is pleased when he sees that his pure devotee is being honored by his disciple. One goes to Krishna through the Guru. So if you're respectful to the Guru, that is good. But don't think of Guru so much that you never think of Krishna. Therefore, even Krishna has accepted a Guru. Yes. What is Namahad? Giving some words and... How it can be useful. Namahat is a transcendental plan for preaching that was presented by Thakur Bhakti Vinod. Thakur Bhakti Vinod was a magistrate and a householder. He was a special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Thakur Bhakti Vinod said in his Namahata program, just like in every shop, every corner there's a shop. The, every corner there's a shop where you can buy sense gratification. You can buy cigarettes, liquor, any corner, meat, any... So similarly, there must be a market in every corner where you can distribute the glories of God's name. So in every corner, there must be a place where the glories of God can be discussed and distributed. Just like all of you live at home in different places. So each of your house should become a shop. And you make it a shop from where you can distribute the glories of the Lord. You can call people to your house, have satsang. Uh, Namahat in, in, in the, uh, can you uh, exact meaning Nama, of the term? Namahat means the marketplace for distributing the glories of God. What are uh, the qualities of uh, someone who is uh, um, fit to take initiation? For taking initiation, one must have chanted the Hare Krishna mantra for some period of time at least. He must follow the regulated principle and he must agree to dedicate his life to the instructions of the Guru. One should not take a Guru just for fashion. What is his moral qualities? Huh? What is his moral? There is no uh, some... Uh, what is moral qualities? Moral quality? I don't know what you mean by moral. I said everything is moral. Ah, those 26 qualities. If he hasn't... These 26 qualities he will develop gradually. If you have yeah. developed all the 26 qualities before initiation, then you may take initiation at the age of 80 or 90. Uh, if the devotee is faced um, in danger, so what should he do? When a devotee is in danger, he should just remember the lotus feet of the Lord even more. Just like there's a very nice prayer by Queen Kunti. Queen Kunti says, Vipadu Santu Taha Sashwa Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru Bhavata Darshanam Yat Sayyad Apunar Bhava Darshanam. She says, My dear Lord, please may the calamities increase because the more problems I have to face, the more problem I have to face, the more I meditate at the lotus feet. And the more I meditate at the lotus feet, the faster will I become free from the cycle of birth and death. I'll ask you all a question. Why is it that one person in difficulty turns to God and another person in difficulty turns to the vodka? Because the karmis, when they are in difficulty, they just take more and more vodka, isn't it? Yes. And uh, according to this problem, uh, there are also some uh, human uh, uh, who are Just like you can see, as I said, you can't speak Sanskrit or Hindi, I can't speak Russian, you can't speak English, but still we can talk because we can both chant Hare Krishna. So you can see it is very practical and easy. So, um, yeah. Last question. Hmm? Uh, in one lecture, uh, lecture Hare Krishna Swami says that um, 
all our problems are coming uh, out of lust. You know. And uh, he says that there is a stick uh, with which we can beat that lust. And he says that he wants explanation what is that stick and he wants you, you to beat him with that stick. That stick is the Hare Krishna month. That one one medicine for all diseases. So today, so today we completed the discussion of the twenty six qualities of a devotee, and these twenty six qualities were explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Tomorrow I'll discuss something very interesting. Also, this is going to be the dialogue between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy. Ramananda Roy was the governor of a of a republic in India. So thank you.